Afraid to face the tax collector tomorrow? Fed up with high prices? Want to get away from it all? We offer you escape. You have shipped aboard a South Sea schooner with a ghost of its dead captain in command. A ghost who shoots guns, resurrects the dead, creates a terror from which you cannot escape. Escape, produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape across the limitless horizons of the South Seas in Alfred Noy's version of the classic legend of Blue Water, The Log of the Evening Star. Tahiti, French Oceania, June the 19th. The sailing schooner Evening Star, reported missing since the 1st of April, Today was discovered a hundred miles west of here, drifting about in a dead calm, with all sails set, but not a soul on board. The ship, when found, was well stocked with food and water, and all three of her small boats were still present. The sun-baked body of the ship's cat was lying in the bow, and the mess table in the crew's quarters had been laid in preparation for a meal which was never served. Otherwise, everything aboard seemed to be in order and no solution can be offered to explain the whereabouts of the 12 persons who sailed on her from San Francisco. It appears that the fate of the evening star will remain permanently one of the weird and unsolved mysteries of the sea. My name is Harper. I'm first mate of the South Sea schooner, Evening Star. I'm writing this because I believe it my duty to make some record of the terrible things which have just occurred. Events I can't possibly enter in the ship's log. I can't, of course, be certain that this account will ever come to light because I'm not likely to live another 24 hours. I guess I should have been able to see it three weeks ago on the day we sailed from San Francisco, but I didn't. I remember I was standing on the deck of the Evening Star talking to Cato, the cook, while we waited for Captain Burgess to come aboard. We were due to sail in a half hour. Where you think we go on this trip, Mr. Hopper? Oh, I don't know, Cato. Marquesas first. Then Tahiti, maybe on Australia. It's good to leave port. It's better on open sea. <laughs> you said it. We seem very strange this trip without Captain Dayra. Yeah. We'd had the same gang together for over two years. Hmm. Some Kanakas and the crew, you and I and Burgess. Dayra. Hard to believe he's been dead four months now, isn't it? Yes, yes. Captain Darrell was proud man, was good captain. Mm -hmm. It's too bad he died. Yeah. Well, Burgess will make a good skipper, too. He was all right as first mate. Why he no come on board yet? Captain Burgess? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Just can't bear to leave that new bride of his, I guess. You, you have seen her, Mr. Hopper? You know her, maybe? No, no, I haven't. He's been staying down the coast somewhere ever since he got married a couple weeks ago. I don't even know who she is. New wife, new command. Who is Rocky Man? <laughs> Cato, I got a strong hunch you're a sentimentalist down underneath. Oh, it's possible, Mr. Harper. It has been said. Hey, Cato, uh, hmm? there's Burgess now coming down the pier. Oh, is somebody with him, too? Yeah. Guess she's come down to see him off, huh? At least we'll get a chance. No. 
Well, that's Mrs. Dayrell. Yeah, maybe she go on ship too, just like old time. No, no, no. She wouldn't want to sail on the ship her husband died on. I wonder... No, Mr. Harper, no, no. Mr. Harper, look. Three birds fly around the mast. Uh, yeah, I see him, Cato. He's very bad sign. Very bad. Well, I don't know what you mean by that, yeah, but... Mr. I... Harper, is everything in order? Oh, right, Captain Burgess. We can sail any time you want. How are you, Miss Darrell? Oh, I just... Fr- Darrell? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mr. Harper, even though you're already acquainted with the lady, I'd like to present my wife. Your wife? We were married two weeks ago, Mr. Harper. I'm sailing with you on this trip. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to have you aboard, Mrs. Dan. Burgess, I mean. Well, it'll... Be like old times. Old times, Mr. Harper? Well, I mean, all of us together and everything. Well, congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Mr. Harper. Look, I've brought Satan along, too. He wouldn't miss this trip for anything. (laughs) Yeah, he's right at home. How are you, Satan? Hmm? Uh, Would you like to look over the clearance papers, Captain Burgess? I got them right here. No, thank you, Mr. Harper. I'll assume they're in order. We'll sail as soon as Mrs. Day... As soon as my wife's trunk comes aboard. Yes, sir. I'll be in the cabin if you want anything. Uh, Cato, would you yes. take Satan and give him something to eat? I think he's hungry. Yes, Missy. I'll take him right now. Come on, Kitty. We'll go fight something to eat. Well, Mr. Harper, we're all together again. That's right, Miss Burgess. We've even got Satan on board. Yes. All of us, except my husband. Your husband is down in the cabin, Mrs. Burgess. You mean we're all here except Captain Dayrell? Well, once out at sea, things straightened out a little, the way they always do. After a while, we got so we could think of her as Mrs. Burgess instead of Mrs. Dayrell. And after that, it wasn't so awkward. Captain Burgess stayed to himself quite a bit. But all in all, it was a fairly pleasant three weeks. Up until yesterday afternoon. I was standing in the bow, smoking, watching a school of dolphins skip out of the water when Mrs. Burgess came up behind me. Mr. Harper, I wonder if I could speak to you a moment. Of course, Miss Burgess. I'm... I'm terribly frightened. You're frightened? What about Is he around anywhere? Is who around? My husband. I don't want him to hear me. What? Now, Mrs. Burgess, I can't listen to... No, please. You're the only one I can turn to. We're all in terrible danger, you know. Danger? What are you talking about? Mr. Harper, do you have any reason to think my husband may be... not quite himself? Not quite himself? In what way? Do you think he may be insane? Of course not. Yes, but you don't understand. I understand one thing, Mrs. Burgess. I'd better get back to my duties. I quite agree with you, Mr. Harper. Captain Burgess. I believe you really should stay in the cabin, my dear. It's far too windy for you up here in the bow. Yes. I was just going. I mean, I'm going right now. She has a rather delicate throat, Mr. Harper. Catches cold easily. Used to be a singer, you know. Yes, sir, I know. Oh, yes. Yes, of course you do. Well, don't pay too much attention to anything my wife might say, Mr. Harper. She's, well, she's upset. Just don't pay any attention to her. Something was wrong, all right. No question of that. But I couldn't figure what. I couldn't think of any terrible danger. It seemed more likely it was Mrs. Burgess who was not quite herself. Well, anyway, the whole business didn't make much sense, so I shrugged it off and forgot about it for a couple of hours. It was just at dusk. Most of the crew was below decks. I was sitting on the after hatch, scratching the ears of Satan, the ship's cat. The sun was just dropping past the horizon, and Satan was purring, meowing. Everything was pretty peaceful. 
Till I heard those voices coming from Captain Burgess' cabin. No, no, really, I didn't. I wouldn't tell anybody. You know I wouldn't. It wasn't a matter of eavesdropping. They'd even forgotten anyone might hear them. You don't know. You're only saying it. I mean it all right. Then you don't care about me. If he were alive, I'd still be with him. You can say that when you know about the thing that's here on board with us. Oh, it's your imagination. I told you that. Imagination, then. Is that what you told Harper? Is it? No. No. I tell me. Look out, Satan. This is what he wants me to do. Captain Burgess. Captain Burgess. Yes, Mr. Harper. What is it? I, uh... Wondered if you wanted Cato to bring your dinner here to the cabin, sir. No, Mr. Harper. I'll eat at the wheel. Yes, sir. Going aft now. Tell him to bring it up right away. All right, Captain Burgess. Mr. Harper, listen carefully. You've got to help me. All right. How? Meet me on the after deck as soon as it's dark. In an hour, if I can get away from him. Did you want something else, Mr. Harper? No, sir. Nothing else, Captain. Let's suppose you go about your duties. But your wife, sir... Doesn't she want something to eat? She does not, Mr. Harper. She's indisposed. She does not wish to be disturbed. Is that perfectly clear? Now I was convinced that there was danger aboard the Evening Star. I had a feeling that something deadly was stirring itself and coming awake below decks. The first night shadows were bringing a terrible, threatening tenseness. I felt that I ought to scream to keep from laughing. Yet there was nothing to laugh about. I was quite certain that if I hadn't knocked on that door, Captain Burgess would have killed his wife. But why? Well, I hadn't found any sensible answer by the time Cato brought a tray of food to my cabin. Good evening, Mr. Harper. Oh, put it there in the chart table, will you? Thank you, Mr. Harper. How's it uh, look on deck, Cato? Oh, deck? I do not understand you, Mr. Harper. I mean, well, is it dark yet? Oh, it's get dark soon, I think. And I think, too, tonight is not good night. What do you mean by that? Is uh, something bad on board ship, Mr. Harper? I no understand what I no see it, I no hear it, but inside I sense it all the time grow bigger. Well, that's your imagination, Cato. Is the uh, imagination bother you too, Mr. Hopper? Ah. This morning, three birds fly over ship together. All day I burn much incense. Again, uh, tonight, three birds fly over ship together. Well, what about it? It's a sign of death, Mr. Harper. Tonight on this ship, somebody die. You all like something else, maybe? No. No, Kato, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Harper. Good night, please. So... I wasn't the only one on board who was feeling something was wrong. I wondered if Cato knew any more of what was back of it than I did. You couldn't tell by looking at him. He could be busting with joy or scared half to death. And that face of his would never show either one. Anyway, ten minutes later, I was out on the dark fantail, watching the moon cast shadows from the rigging. After a while, I heard her calling my name. Mr. Harper, Mr. Harper. Here I am, Miss Burgess. Oh, thank heaven. Where's the captain? I don't know. He didn't come back to the cabin. All right. Now, suppose you tell me what it's all about and talk fast. I don't know what it's about, Mr. Harper. Not really. I only know that my husband has gone insane. Now, you told me that earlier. What makes you think so? Well, he, he tried to kill me. Yes, I know. Why? Because of last night. He came into my cabin and woke me up. He was trembling, white as a sheep. But why? He said he'd just seen Captain Dayrell on deck. Dayrell, but he's... Yes, he died four months ago. I told him he imagined it. He keeps talking about it. He says Captain Dayrell has come back to... to punish us. Punish you? For what? Well, for not waiting longer to get married. Oh, you've got to do something. 
Well, if I use force, Mrs. Burgess, it's the same as mutiny. Yes, but he's insane. He may do anything. Yes, you're right there. I don't know, but what... Wait. Hmm? There, by the mast. Look! It's day, Ralph. No! Oh, no! There wasn't any doubt about it. The moonlight behind him threw his shadow toward us on the deck. And he had on that tall, peaked cap and the white muffler he'd always worn when he was alive. He didn't move, didn't say anything. Just stood there, looking at us. No, please! Miss Burgess! No! Before I could stop her, Miss Burgess turned and ran for the rail and jumped overboard. One of the Kanakas saw her, grabbed a life preserver, and went in after her. I ran to the longboat hanging in the davits of the port rail. Well, what happened, Mr. Hopper? I don't know. Let's get this boat in the water. Mrs. Burgess is overboard along with one of the boys. Did you see anything on deck? Oh, what I see, oh, I don't believe. All right, come on, move. Here, take the oars. The schooner's not got much steerage way, so they shouldn't be far astern. Come on, come on. Hey, somebody's shooting on deck. All right, never mind. Keep rowing, will you? We'll find out about it later. We've got to pick up those two before they go under. <laughs> We didn't find him, though. The shooting on board stopped after a while. We rode around for a half hour or more. We couldn't find a trace of him. Finally, there wasn't anything else to do. So I told the Kanaka to pull for the schooner. We were about ten yards away from the side when... Ah, Mr. Hopper, look! I looked up at the rail. And there stood Dayrell. He didn't say anything. Just stood there. He had a gun in his hand. (laughs) Dayrell, what are you trying to do? (laughs) Grab that oar, Joe. We gotta get away from him. Joe, I said... We were drifting away from the side of the schooner. I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder where the bullet had hit. But the Kanaka was worse off. Blood was running down over his face from a hole in the center of his forehead. That's when I passed out. When I came to, it was broad daylight. The boat was lying, I was lying in, was bumping up against the side of the schooner. And Captain Burgess was Mr. calling Harper. down to me from the rail. Mr. Harper, are you alive? I'm, I'm all right, Captain Burgess. It's been a horrible night, Mr. Harper. But it's all right now. Can you help me aboard, sir? Yes. Can you lift up your arms? Yes, sir. Here. Easy now. Cato, give me a hand here. Careful now. All right. Uh, It's a pretty bad wound. I'm kind of weak. Guess I lost a lot of blood. Sorry about your wife, sir. We couldn't find her. I know. There's only three of us left alive on board now, Mr. Harper. You and I and Cato here. What happened? You may not believe it. It was Captain Dayrell. Yes, I saw him. Got a hold of the ship's guns and killed the whole crew. Locked me in the cabin while he did. But he's dead, Captain Burgess. We buried him at sea four months ago. No matter. He's come back now, Mr. Harper. It's his ship the Evening Star is, and he wants it. No, it's not possible. A man is dead. That's what his wife... I mean, my wife said when I told her I'd seen him. Said I was crazy. I think she knows better now. Maybe we could... Search the ship. Cato and I went through it at daylight this morning. We found nothing. Well, there has to be some explanation. There is. The wicked shall be punished for their sins. What do you mean by that? Nothing, Mr. Harper. Nothing at all. Well, I was his friend. I always thought a lot of Captain Dayrell. You know that, don't you, Mr. Harper? Yes, sir. It's all right now in the daylight. But he'll come back tonight as soon as it's dark... It's only the three of us now to face him, Mr. Harper. <laughs> Four, if you count Satan. And I'm thinking there's more than one Satan on board this ship. They helped me to the bunk in my cabin and left me there. That was about noon today. I could tell by the look on Captain Burgess' face that Well, it was pretty certain I wasn't going to live. That's why I decided to write this account. Try to set down everything that happened. In a way, this is the real log of the Evening Star. 
even if it doesn't make much sense. Anyway, right after sundown, Cato brought me in a tray of food. How you feel now, Mr. Harper? I guess not too bad, Cato. You like something to eat, maybe? Later, maybe. You can leave it there, huh? Yes, but uh, you eat now. Later, I think we all did. Has anything happened yet? It's not dark yet. When it's dark, then he come. Yeah. Where's Captain Burgess? I no see him. He's hide somewhere, I think. Cato, all those who were killed last night, what happened to their bodies? He's buried in sea. This morning I helped Captain Burgess. You, you like something else, maybe? No, thanks, Cato. Then I go burn much incense, make peace with many gods. For last time now, I think. Goodbye, priest. I lit the lamp over the bunk, and I lay there for a long time. I don't know how long. I didn't know where Captain Burgess and Cato were or what they were doing. I kept waiting to hear the sound of shooting. Kept lying there, dreading it. And then gradually, I began to realize that somebody was singing on board, way off. And I knew that voice. I'd heard it somewhere before, singing the same song. It was Mrs. Burgess. Mr. Harper, do you hear it? I hear it, Captain Burgess. What in the name of heaven's going on? It's her. She's come back, too. She's in there with him now in the cabin. Oh, that's impossible. She drowned last night. She's dead. They're both dead, but they've come back. They're in the cabin now, and she's singing for him. She never sang for me, Mr. Harper, but now she's singing for him. Come, Mr. Harper, you've got to help me. I tell you, they're both in the cabin right now. Yes, sir, I don't know. Oh, sure you're too I... weak. I forgot. I'll go alone. I'll stop them somehow. I've got to stop them. I pulled myself up in the bunk and I put my feet on the floor. Weak or not, one way or another, I had to get to that cabin. I managed to stagger outside onto the deck. Captain Burgess had disappeared somewhere. And there was no sign of anything moving there in the moonlight. Except Satan the cat who came up and rubbed against my ankles. The singing had stopped and the ship was quiet. I made my way forward and finally was looking through the skylight. Down into the captain's cabin. One lamp was lit. Its light fell on the hunched figure that strode about the cabin. Cap pulled down low, hands sunk in his pockets. All the old familiar gestures. It was Captain Dayrell, and he was alone. I crouched there with the skylight, shivering from the night wind and from the terror inside of me, watching that awful figure. After a while, it walked over and stood beside the phonograph. And then I realized where that voice had come from. Darrell had always been crazy about his wife singing, and he'd made a lot of records of her voice. He was playing one of them now. The song went on, and he paced back and forth. I still couldn't figure it out. And then, for just a moment, the white muffler fell back from his throat, and for the first time... I saw Captain Darrell's face. I'm not sure how I managed to stumble back here to my cabin. I'm writing this now just as rapidly as I can. I may be interrupted at any minute. If that happens, I'll try to slip it behind the map here on the cabin wall in the hopes that it may be... I can hear him coming now. Whoever may read this, please try to get word to my family in San Francisco. Yes? Come in. I thought you might be asleep, Mr. Harper. How could anybody sleep, Captain Burgess, as long as Darrell's loose on board? Yes, that's true, Mr. Harper. Should have seen him down there in the cabin. And her, too. He was walking up and down as proud as ever. And she was singing for him, just like she used to. Should have seen him. 
I did see him. He never sang for me like that, not at... You saw him? Did he look natural, just as always? Captain Burgess, it was you I saw, dressed up in Darrell's clothes that were stored in the sea chest there in the cabin. Oh, no, Mr. Harper, you're mistaken. It was his spirit come back to punish us. It was you all the time, you who fired those shots last night. You're insane. That's what she said, too. That's because he told her. Because it's the truth. Now he's been talking to you. He's talked to nobody. He's dead. And you've never seen him except in your own guilty conscience. Just what is that guilt, Captain Burgess? Did you kill him? Oh, don't! Don't say that, Mr. Harper. I was his friend. I thought a lot of him, and Mrs. Dayrell, too. Everybody knew we were friends. I... Did he tell you that? You're completely mad. Don't say that, Mr. Harper. I've got to save you from him. He talks to you, and you're weak, and you can't run away. I've got to save Captain you. Captain Burgess, put on that gun. Don't, don't, no, don't. got to save Captain. you. Got to go someplace where he can't find us, Mr. Harper. Go up deck. I'll take you, Mr. Harper. Come on. Uh, don't worry. I'll... I'll save you from him. It's his ship, everything on it, and he wants it back. We've got to give it to him, Mr. Harper. Got to let him have it. Got to get off the ship. Captain Burgess, what has happened? It's you! Darrell! Go away! It's you, Captain Darrell. It's me, Kato. You can't stop us, Darrell. I'll show you. No, no! You see, Mr. Harper, I killed him. Darrell, <laughs> now he can't stop us. <laughs> there he is again. There by the mast. See him, Mr. Harper. I'll... He's coming this way. He won't stop. Got to get away. Got to save you, Mr. Harper. Here, here's the rail. I'll help you. There. See, he's gone, Darrell. Now, there's just me. And I'm going too. You see, it's all yours now, the evening star, just like you wanted it. No, 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 stay back. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> 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 Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. And tonight brought you The Log of the Evening Star by Alfred Noyes. Adapted for radio by Les Crutchfield with Jack Webb as Harper, Alan Reed as Captain Burgess, Gail Page as Mrs. Burgess, Louis Van Ruten as Cato and the Cat, and Pinto Kalvig as the Konica. Music is conceived and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Next week... When you're tired out from doing nothing all weekend, when Blue Monday stares you in the face, next week at this time when your problems seem just too much for you, we offer you Escape. <laughs> Next week, we bring you another exciting story of high adventure. Good night, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>